Hey, what's up, guys? This is Chung here. So this time, uh, today's daily challenge problem, right? Number 600 non-negative integers without consecutive ones. Uh, so this one is a pretty tricky one. And OK, so the de description is very short. So you're given like positive integers, right? And return the number of integers in the range from 0 to n whose binary representations do not contain consecutive ones. Right, so for example, we have n is equal to five, which means we need to, we are we are searching from n to five, right? And then we have six numbers in total, right? The binary representation is as far as follows, as this, and the three is not a valid one because we have two we have two consecutive we have some consecutive ones, right? That's why the answer is five, and then. Example two, this one is pretty uh, basic, right? Zero and one, right? So we have two. So here we have zero, one, and one zero, right? That's from zero to two. That's why we have three here, okay? So the constraints 10 to the power of nine, right? So it's pretty big. You know, the first brutal force way is simply, we simply just loop through everything uh, from zero to n, right? And for each of the number, we uh we check the bits one by one, right? And we see if there's any consecutive ones. If there is, then we just simply skip that. Right? Obviously the time complexity is gonna be at n times what? Times thirty-two, right? Because I think ten to the power of nine is within the range of two to the power of thirty-two, right? That's why this would definitely TLE. And a better one, a little bit better one, which is but we'll still TLE is that, you know, we have a bunch of like bits value, right? So we check the current value, if it's zero or one. If it is zero, it means that, you know, the next one can be either zero or one, right? Or the current one is, is one, then the next one has to be zero. Right, so that's the, the second solution. But this one, as you as you guys can see, even though we have, we could have either zero, uh, one branch or two branch, but the time complexity is still going to be the two to the power of length of the, the bit string, which is 32, right? So this was still TLE. Basically this one, so this one, what, what it improved was that, you know, we're not, basically we're not searching for all the numbers. We're only searching for the numbers that doesn't have a consecutive ones, right? But still, this one will will also will also TLE. Um, so which means we need a better solution, right? Even even better, one, even faster one. Um, so to do that, you know, we have to make some observations here. You know, let's say we have one zero zero uh, one zero zero one, right? You know, remember we're searching the. Uh, Okay, so we have a one zero zero, one zero zero one, right? This is n. Right, so remember we're searching for anything that's smaller than than n, right? So uh, let's say we have the so the first one is one, right? So which means that any number that's within the range uh, from zero, if we fix the first number to be zero. Right, anything after this, right? So anything starts with zero, but ending it could be anything, right? Basically, this is uh, something that will definitely fall in, falls into the, the range of this uh, n, right? If we have, if we know, like, in this range, in this six-bit range, how many, uh, how many like numbers doesn't have a consecutive ones that can greatly that can greatly improve our performance, right? So let's try to solve the sub problem first, and then we'll come back here. Okay. So now the sub problem is that you know, given like a bit, right? Given a a length, okay. Length of of bit, right? How many? Right. How many numbers? 
does not have one once, right? I'll just use the one once for for short, right? So in order to solve this sub problems, you know, we need to look at this one here, okay? Again, right? So let's say now with sub problems that are given like six six bit value, right? We want to, we want to know how many right how many uh, numbers right with the with the size with the length of six digits six bits right who doesn't have the the consecutive ones right so now we can I think that we can re uh, we can go back to the second approach you know because this one okay obviously you know the first one can be either zero or one right so let's say if if the first one is zero okay so the first scenario is that you know the first one, oh, sorry, the first one we we put it zero. The second scenario is that we put the second one, we put the first one to one, right? So this is the two scenarios we can use to solve this one recursively, okay? So if we, oh, we have a DP, right? So let's define a D, DPI here, right? I is the, basically this is the DPI, right? Of beta. The length is I here, right? So that's the definition of the DP here. Um, so we have we have two branches, right? Basically, we can either put this one current one to zero or one. So if if we put the left most significant, the the most significant, okay. So the most significant most most significant bit to zero. Then it means that you know. The next one. The next one can either be zero or one. Right, because you know. Zero zero it doesn't have any consecutive one is, is fine. So what does this mean? This so what's this? This is like it means that you know the next this one can be anything, right? So this is what? This is a DP I minus one. Right? Because you know if we fix zero, then the next one can be either zero or one. Basically anything after this one can be <coughs> which means it's basically it's it's a it's a sub that sub problem of DPI minus one. But if if this the, if this one is one, it means that the next one has to be zero, right? And after zero, right? Then the sub problem is what? So this one can be anything again, right? Here's like this. So now we have now we have two fixed bits. The remaining is what? I minus two, right? So that's how we uh, can calculate the uh, the DPI here, right? Basically, this one is going to be what DP of I minus one plus DP of I minus I minus two, right? So that's going to be the the tr state transition function, and this one is, is what actually is a Fibonacci number, right? But the difference is that you know the value of DP zero is, is is instead of instead of zero, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be one, and DP of one is gonna be instead of one, it's gonna be two. Right. So the base case is what? So the base case is like this. Uh, we already talk about. We already saw the example. DP one is what? DP one is equals to two, right? Because DP one is with, with one digits. We have what? We have either zero or one. That's that's why the answer is the answer is two, right? And we need for the Fibonacci since we have i minus two, we need another like we need another uh, base case which is dp zero. Dp zero is going to be one. And and what and why is that? Because because for dp three, right? Dp three equals to dp uh, two plus Sorry, not 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 for DP three. So D uh, DP two here, DP two equals to DP uh, one minus DP zero uh, plus DP zero. Okay, so DP two we already saw the example. DP two the answer should be three, right? Because for DP two we have zero one and one zero, right? That's why we have DP three, and for DP 
the dp1 is 2, and then the leaves dp0 to 1. So we have to set dp0 to 1. Actually, dp0 to 1, this doesn't make any sense, right? We simply use this one to make sure we can get a 3 for dp2, right? Or you can just simply set dp2 equals to 3. You don't have to worry about this dp0, right? Uh, cool. I think that's... Uh, I think that's the that's the first sub problem. I, I think this DP zero might be, might also be useful. Uh, let me think. Yeah, I think this one also make also also going to be useful. But I will I will look, we'll take a look at at it later. But and anyway, so that's how we calculate the the DP. Basically, given like a length of a of a bit string, uh, we can use this one to calculate the uh, the total number within uh, who has the same who has this bit value, uh, who has this bit length that who doesn't have a uh, a consecutive ones, right? Okay, cool. So with that, you know, let's let's go back to the original. Problems one zero zero one zero zero one right. So now, uh, so first we see this number one here right. And then we have this what we fix zero. So which means that anything that's after zero can be can be calculated right. So which means that you know so now if we fix zero so what range we're covering we're covering this range zero 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 two. 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, right? So what's this value? This is a dp of 6, right? Because we have this 6, that's that's the range we're covering, right? Mm. OK, so that's that. And but if it's 0, Right. Oh, uh, sorry. So we we covered that, right? So we covered the uh, we covered the DP six uh, with this one. But how about one case, right? So for one zero 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 zero, zero two one 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 one, right? So this is something we cannot cover. Basically, we we cannot use DP DP seven to cover. To do to cover th this one case, right? Because you know this will ha you also include some values numbers who is greater than this than the original n, right? That's why we can only uh, use this dp when the current one is when the current bit value is one. Then how about okay? So how about the uh, di how about this range? The range of what? The range of of this one, which is going to be the one to to this uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, right? So we already covered this scenario, uh, this uh, range. Then how about this range, right? How, how can we calculate this range? So what we can do is we simply just uh, keep moving the, the bit value to the right side until we see another one, OK? So let's say. This is one, right? So now let's let's keep going. Uh, go, let's go to the next bit. The next bit is zero. Zero means we cannot do anything, okay? And then the next one is also zero. We simply skip that. We don't we don't accumulate, right? Because we 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 shouldn't uh because this DP will include both zero and one, right? Because that's for everything. Now the next one is is one, right? Then we can just use DP again. Why is that? Because now with one, we can use the similar logic here, right? Now we have this one. So the range we have is one zero 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 zero, right? To what? To one zero 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 one one one. So this is the zero we, we fixed, right? And this is the zero bit value we fixed. Okay. So this is the sec the second range. This is what DP of, of what of seven. I'm sorry. DPL DP of three, right? Second one. 
because now we see another one here. That's why we can uh, use a similar uh, log, uh, strategy as, a, as for the, the first one, right? Basically, we're going to fix this one to, to zero. And then once we fix this one to zero, then the rest can be an, anything, right? That's why we have DP3 here. Okay, and then the last one is the last one is, and then we just keep going to zero zero, and then until we re, re, re reach here, it's going to be a zero zero. Uh, so now going to be a one zero zero zero, right? To this one zero zero one zero zero one. So that this is going to be the the last range, going to be DP of one. Uh, yeah, I think that's it, right? So now, as you guys can see, if we just uh, follow this strategy, we can cover uh, all the all, all the ranges, right? Because here, you know, we're covering the range from this zero to zero to this one, and also covering from this one to to here, right? Now we're splitting the this big problem into a few sub problems, which is DP six plus DP three plus DP one, right? Mm. So that's the, that's the first scenario. And how about the second one? We have a second scenario, which is the you know, currently this one doesn't the the original number itself doesn't include any any of the uh, the consecutive one. That's why we can just keep going until we reach the end. Right. What if this one has an has? Let's say, for example, if this one has a one, then what will what what will be di uh, different? This one, right? So now, I think the only difference is that you know, so here stays the same. This one stays the same. And now for the for the for the third for the third one, you know, instead of this one, we're gonna so the one we are uh, carving the range we're carving is gonna be this, right? Zero. To this zero one one right so this is going to be the the thing we're covering here because this is the, going to be the, the ones we're we're fixing right that's why we have we have two here right so that's that and now you know can we continue no and why is that because you know so this is the the last number we're covering here right and as you guys can see any number that who that is a greater than this current number will result in will, will result to a consecutive one because you know this one is to have one one you know any number if we add one doesn't really matter how many numbers we added here if we add one we'll have like what we'll have like one zero zero one one zero zero right which will have consecutive two uh, consecutive ones if we add two we have like this one it's also Basically, this is the last number that will not have a consecutive ones. Any number that greater than than this than the last number here will result to a consecutive one. That's why you know, if the current number, if the limit that this range here has a consecutive one, and this is where we should stop, we should not continue. Right. Cool. Uh, I think that's the basic idea here. Let's go back to the original problem here. Um, I think we can try to implement implement this problem, right? So actually, the implementation is pretty short, but the idea behind it is pretty mind-boggling, right? So like I said, uh, we need to like this kind of Fibonacci-like uh, DP structure first to help us to pre-calculate the uh, Mm. The number of the number of the valid the count of the, the valid numbers within the who has the same certain like length of the bits, right? So let's do a DP of uh, times twenty uh, thirty two because that's the biggest number we're dealing with, right? So like I said, the DP zero equals to one, right? And DP one equals to two. I think dp0 equals to 1, this also has a meaning to it, but it's not that obvious, right? 
So for i in range of 2.32, here we have dp of what i plus uh, equals to dp of i minus 1 plus dp of i minus 2, right? We have already talked about this, how, why this one is 1 or 2, right? And then the next one is that we have to check, right? We have to check the 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 most significant bit first, right? Uh, let's do a define k equals 30, 31, right? And then we need a pre equals to 0, equals to answer equals to 0. And answer is equal to 0, okay? So this pre, so the pre is used to check if we have, if we need to stop, right? In case, in case the original n has a, like con two consecutive numbers, right? Something like this, right? So basically, we need to maintain like a pre, pre like digits, right? In case we have two consecutive one, that's when we need to stop, right? So basically, we have while of k is greater equal to, than zero. Okay, I'll I'll explain why we we need a equal to zero here. If so, basically, we check if the current digits is like is is one. Right of this k, and then it does not equal to zero. Right, it means it is one. Then we do answer dot uh, plot dp of k. Right. So why we have k and dpk here? Right again. Right. So let's say we have one zero zero one zero one. Right. So we're checking this this bit. Right. So what is the bit here? So we have k is what is five. Right. So if we do a one leftmost five, we have what? We have one zero 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 zero. Right. That's how we set thi set this one. And the five is what? The five is actually exactly the the, the count of the the remaining digits, right? The remaining bits except for the current one, which is exactly five. That's why we use DPK to represent this one. Okay. And then. Right, like I said, right, okay, and then else, right, else uh, we simply just do nothing, right, and then we do a k minus 1, and then we return the answer or something, we return the end, right. But here, like I said, we also need to take care of this uh, consecutive 1 case, which means that, you know, if the pre is all, it's equal, also equal to 1, that's when we will simply return the answer. And then we set the pre equals to one here, and then the pre will be zero, right? Because that's the simple, that's the, the to update the previous uh, value, okay? And then, so the first thing is that why we do a k equals to zero here? How about if we do a k greater than zero, if we don't consider that, so what's gonna happen, right? So what will happen is that, you know, for the, for the very basic case, let's say if the n is equal to five, which is one zero one, right? Uh, if it's one zero one, so it will be what? So it will be first. It's going to be a zero, uh, zero zero to zero one one, right? Which is a dp of three, right? Dp of of three, and then if we stop at k is equal to 1 instead of 0, then it means that we, we, would, we would, there's no way we can check the last bit, right? Basically, the k equals to 0 is to check the last bit. If the last bit is, is 1, we also need to cover that. We also need to con, uh, consider that because, you know, if the last bit is 1, it means that we have, we have, we have 1, 0, 0 needs to cover, right? That's why we need to do a equal to, to zero. Okay. And then the last one is that when we return, we need to return the answer plus one. So this one is to include include n itself. Right? Because Everything we have been doing in this while loop here is we're only considering the uh, the what we're only con <coughs> uh, we're only uh, including we're only considering uh, the anything that's smaller than n, right? We're not we're not uh, checking the the number n itself. 
right? Because you know, for again for one zero one, right? So the first range we're covering is what we're covering is this from zero zero one zero 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 to zero one one, right? And what and the the second the last the last uh range we're covering is what is from one zero uh zero to one zero zero. It's not to one zero one. So I know this part is a little bit tricky. I think it's tricky here. It's not it's not one uh one zero one because because we are fixing this one to be zero and then there nothing there's nothing else here. Right? Because you know if we have a uh you have one 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 zero right and this is then when we cover when we try to fix this one to be zero and then that's when we we have cover we will have one zero zero to one zero one right this is the one we will cover the uh, the one the one zero one case but for this one actually since we're fixing this zero in this case so similarly since this is one we're, we're fixing zero here which means that you know the range we're covering is one zero zero to one zero zero for the, for the last one, not one zero one, right? So this is a, this is a, the difference. Okay, so which means that you know this while loop will never cover the n itself. And that's why you know we we need to we need to do an answer plus one because you know when we when there's a consect when there's a consecutive uh, once. Uh, in this n itself, obviously we should not include this n number into the final answer. That's why you know whenever this if check is true, we simply re return the answer. But if nothing, if there's never a consecutive once in this n, we we'll, we need to include it into the final answer. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. You know, I'm not sure for the for the for this last part if you guys. Uh, clear about that because you know I the the way we are doing this thing is that you know uh, oh and that's why when I it says that you know DP0 do does have, have a meaning. It's 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 this case which is for the one for this case for the zero for the zero zero case one zero zero to one zero zero this is also another another uh valid number right that's why you know DP0 is one because we are covering uh, one number in this case, which is the one zero zero itself. Right, because it, it, it means that, you know, the so DP zero means that basically by fixing the current, uh, after fixing the current one to be zero, there's not, nothing, there's nothing on the on the right on the right side, for example, this one, right? So basically, if you fix the current one to be zero, there will be a five digits on the on on the right side. That's why we have this DP five. So DP zero means that you know after fixing the current one to be zero, there's zero digits on the right side, which means that you know this DP zero will will be representing this this one zero zero itself, right? That's the meaning of DP zero, I think. And yeah, so that's it. I know it's a pretty long explanation, but I hope you guys uh, can understand what I'm trying to explain here. And as you guys can see, so now the time complexity is what? Simply a O of 32 to the max, right? Because the K is like this, and this this is also like a constant, right? Oh, we haven't even run it. So let, let's run it. So what's the point if it didn't work, right? <laughs> All right. Cool. So it works, right? Um, yeah, I think that's it, right? I mean, just to recap. So basically, this to solve this problem, you know, we have we need to make we need to solve two sub -pro sub problems. The first one is that given like given like a, a length of of the digits, how many valid numbers? How many numbers within uh, who has that uh, size? Who has this ith length of digits are the valid numbers, and we use this one, this uh, Fibonacci-like uh, kind of DP transition function to calculate it, right? And so that's it. And the second one is that you know, with given this DP here, right? How can we utilize this DP to help us to find all the valid numbers within the 
within the given numbers, right? So the way we're doing it is that you know we only use the this Fibonacci this DP array whenever we see a one, because otherwise you know we don't know because with, with the one that's uh, that's when we can fix this one to zero and we can just safely check all the remaining digits on the, on the right side, right? And then and then for the for the, for the range which is which is greater than the current range, right? We simply just keep go moving forward until we see a, ne a next one, right? And then we just keep doing it, accumulating that. And the the last thing is that how can we deal with the this consecutive ones in the original n, right? We simply stop there. Uh, cool. I think that's it for this problem. And thank you for watching this video, guys. And stay tuned. See you guys soon. Bye bye.